Hello animation students and welcome to After Effects and Project One. I'm going to introduce you to After Effects and show you a few things uh, about the software. We're not going to learn everything about After Effects this semester. Uh, it would be out of scope to try to do that all in one semester, but we are going to learn quite a bit and uh, make some nifty animations. So your first animation assignment is to create a bouncing ball. One of those animation, you'll be making two animations. One will be a frame-by-frame -frame, uh, drawing of a bouncing ball, and then the other one will be keyframes with After Effects creating the in-between frames. So um, I'll just show you a little bit about After Effects to get started. And I'm going to show, I'll show a couple of example projects as well. These are just in the um, in the D2L section, but this is uh, Robert White, as you can see, and they go by pretty quickly. I'm going to put it on loop so it keeps running. Um, this is a really good example of how to take the assignment just a little further um, than just doing the bare minimum and creating uh, a little bit of a story. Um, so something that is something that is a bouncing ball um, will be just fine in terms of doing an exercise, but um, this is a good example because it, it becomes something more, it becomes art, you know, so. And you can of course look at all these on your own time anyway, but I'll just play this one as well. So uh, this one is the, the other one was the keyframes, this one is the hand drawn, so every frame is drawn by hand on this one. So um, again, uh, follows the basic principles of the assignment, but uh, also takes it a little further. So I like that. Um, you know, doing the bare minimum is, is fine, again, in terms of creating an exercise, but it's it's always nice to go a little further, um, make some art, have a portfolio piece. Uh, that's always recommended. So uh, when you start After Effects, you'll see this startup screen, and you can, you can watch the opening tutorials if you want. Um, I'm going to show a couple opening tutorials on this video. Um, you can start a new project. Um, you can go to open existing projects. Of course, the first time you do this, you won't have any. Um, those will be the main things that are important. So the first time you do it, you're going to click New Project. Okay, so this is what a new project looks like. and. Um, You've got a number of different windows. This is probably pretty familiar. Um, you know, all Adobe products are pretty similar. Uh, not the same, but pretty similar. So you've got a tool panel up here. Uh, this is by default. You can, of course, move all this stuff around. Um, you've got a project panel right here. This is your composition window. And um, After Effects doesn't do much of anything without a composition. So the first thing. Um, you're going to do here is click New Composition and the composition settings will pop up and we can name that composition right there so we can just call this um, tutorial if you want it doesn't matter uh, under preset we're going to do HDTV 24 it might be on 29.97 by default change that to HDTV 24 1080 24. That will be the setting for all of our animations this semester. And mostly the rest of the stuff can be left at default. The default duration is 30 seconds. Uh, that's a pretty long animation. That's more than what you're probably going to be creating, especially in the beginning. So um, you can take that down if you want, and of course you can change it later as well. So I'll take that down to 10 seconds. Um, Actually, for what we're going to be doing here, I'm going to take it down to one second. So click OK. Dad. And we now have a 
composition called tutorial uh, with the settings that we put in here. Our timeline is right here and it shows uh, one second of animation or in other words 24 frames. Right here is where the assets in your timeline will be. So you will have potentially still images, shapes and solid colors, video, um, and stuff like that. All that will go in here and it layers in much the same way that Photoshop layers. But with the slight caveat that it's in motion, so it's not just a still image. But what you learned in your Photoshop layers is going to be applicable right down here. So these are the layers. Um, you can change your workspace and I think it's yeah right here. Uh, if you want to change to a different workspace or um, save the workspace, whatever workspace that you have, you can do that here. So that just means the arrangement of the panels and such. I'm just going to keep it at the default. Um, that'll be fine for us. But uh, as you work, you might you might want to change it to something that's more efficient for you personally. And um, and yeah, you just uh, you can tear these tabs off just like any other Adobe application and move them around and. just generally recreate the um, interface. So same as any other Adobe application. Okay, so basically um, this is where most of our work is going to be shown and as we work you can, I'll just put a shape on the canvas there on the composition you can see the first layer appears, shape layer one. And if I press space bar, I can start the animation. So obviously it's not animated yet. Okay, right now I'm going to play a couple of startup videos for you to get to know After Effects, and we'll go from there. As you first launch After Effects, it's really important to understand how project files are saved and how all the assets that you'll be working with should be organized on your hard drive before you ever bring them into an After Effects project. The first time you launch the application, you'll notice this start screen. And working from the top down, it's divided up into two sections, the work section and the learn section. We're gonna focus on the work section and go to the upper left corner here and recent is selected and that gives me a list of the recent projects that I've opened. Now, obviously, if you've never opened an After Effects project before, you probably won't have anything in your list. Now, usually when I get started, I click on the New Project button, but since I already created a project for us to work with, I'm gonna choose Open Project. When the Open panel pops up, navigate to your project files. If you don't have these project files, you can feel free to follow along using your own assets. In the open dialog box, let's look at our project files. Notice I have four different After Effects project files. And if you come over here on the right hand side, you'll notice under the size that none of them are particularly large. In fact, they're less than a megabyte a piece. Let's continue to look at our project. I'll click once on the open and save projects file and then go to the lower right hand corner and click the open button to open that file. Now, as you can see in this After Effects project, I've got quite a lot of things going on. If we just press the space bar, we can preview the animation. And just press the space bar to stop playback. And as you can see, I've got video files in there. I've got graphics in there. Let's take a closer look and figure out where these files actually are. If we go to the upper left corner of the interface, there's this area called the project panel. Click once in the project panel to make it active. And I know it's the project panel because it says project in the upper left hand corner. This is the panel where you will import and organize all the assets that you'll be using in your different After Effects projects. When you build graphic builds like this, they'll be built in something called a composition, which is represented here in the composition panel and down here in the timeline. A composition is just a stack of layers that create this composite. In the project panel, 
if we look, you notice I've already created a bunch of folders and organized several different elements. Like I have a music file here. If we go down to the bottom, I have video footage. If you click on any one of these files, you'll get information at the top of the project panel showing you a little bit about that file. This is a video file. It should be larger than one megabyte. So let's do some further investigation by right clicking on the video file and choose Reveal in Explorer if you're on Windows or Reveal in Finder if you're on the Mac. So if we look at the selected file, you can see it's a compressed video file, an MP4 file, and its size is definitely larger than one megabyte. I'm gonna navigate back one folder in my browser. I'll click here and you notice these are my project files. The way I've organized things on my hard drive, I created a folder called Assets, and anything that I thought I was going to import into any of these After Effects projects, I put in the Assets folder. That's because After Effects projects don't embed external files. They reference where those files live on your hard drive. So whenever you're working in After Effects, it's always wise to keep all the elements you'd like to import into your project in one centralized location. Let's take a look at how the interface of After Effects is designed so you can begin to get comfortable navigating the application. I'm going to be working in a project I've already built, but please feel free to follow along using any After Effects project. Now it's important to note, there are many different panels, buttons, switches, and options to the interface. And in this video, we'll be focusing on the main elements of the interface to get you up and running quickly. To determine how the elements are laid out within the interface, we need to first set our workspace. So in the menu bar, I'm going to go to Window, Workspace, and make sure I'm set to the standard workspace. Different workspaces are designed for different job tasks. For example, if I were doing a text-heavy animation, I might use the text workspace. But again, we'll make sure we're in the standard workspace. And if your interface still doesn't look right, you can come down here and reset standard to its original saved layout. Now I want you to come to the upper left portion of the interface and click once to make sure this panel is active. This panel is the project panel and I know that because its name is in the upper left corner and to the right of the name you'll see three lines. If you click on those three lines that'll give you access to the panel menu which gives you settings specific to the individual panel. You'll notice these lines repeated throughout the different panels in the interface. Now the project panel is where you'll import and organize all the elements you'll be using to build your After Effects projects. Now in this project, I've already organized everything into folders. So I'm gonna go down to the bottom folder where it says video footage. And to look in that folder, I'll click the triangle to the left of the folder. And then I'll just click once on the top video clip and that'll load up a preview here in the top of my project panel. And it also shows me some important settings about the format of that file itself. Now, when you're working in After Effects and building elements, you'll be building things called compositions. At the top of the project panel, I have the AA Compositions folder. And in there, I have the Tour of the Interface composition. So if I double click on that icon, notice now the timeline is active. And the timeline and the composition panel, which is right here in the middle of the interface, work together in conjunction. The timeline is divided up into two sections. The left side allows you to stack layers vertically, one on top of the other. So if I want to select a layer, I can just click once on that layer and I know it's selected because it's bright white. I can turn its visibility off here on the left hand side by clicking on the eyeball or clicking it again to turn it back on. Now if I want to change where this layer appears vertically, I can click on that layer and drag it down to the bottom of the timeline and when I let go, now you notice it's hidden under all the other layers so I can't see it. If I want to undo the last thing I did, I can press Ctrl Z on Windows or Command Z on the Mac to undo. You can press that multiple times to go back multiple steps. Now on the right side of the timeline, this determines where the layers appear over time. And you notice this blue line has an element on top that if I hover over top, it tells me it's the current time indicator. The menu that popped up is called a tooltip and they're on by default. So if you're ever not sure what something is, just hover over top of it. Now the current time indicator determines exactly what frame we're going to be viewing in the composition panel. So if I click on this and drag left or right in the timeline, notice I'm viewing different frames in my composition panel. Notice also as I slide over different layers, we can see other elements in our composition. 
To know exactly what frame you're on, you want to look in the lower left corner of the composition panel here, this will tell you, or in the upper left corner of the timeline itself. As you're working in the interface of After Effects, you might want to look in the upper right corner in the info panel because you'll get little menu items letting you know what it was you last completed. Now you may have noticed we're working in kind of a circle, starting with the project panel, then to the timeline, then the composition panel. Now I'm on the right side in the info panel. And if we come all the way back up to the start of our circle here in the upper left area, we have the toolbar. The toolbar allows you to add different elements to your projects. For example, I could add a rectangle into here, or I could add cameras, I could add paintbrush strokes. You get the general idea. Honestly, 90% of the time when I'm working in After Effects, I'm using this leftmost tool here called the selection tool. And looking at the tooltip, I can see if I press V on my keyboard, that will grab that tool. Now you may have noticed, whenever you click on an object, you've made it selected. So layer one is selected when I double clicked on the composition, that is selected when I clicked in the timeline, that panel is active. So when you're working in After Effects, it's very important that you pay close attention to where you're clicking and what is selected, because there will be different menu options made available depending on which panel or property is currently active. While many graphics can be created in After Effects, there will be plenty of times when you'll want to animate files created in other applications, like Photoshop files or Illustrator files, you know, photographs and video files. To get started, we're going to import a couple of different kinds of files. The first way you can import assets into After Effects is by going up to the menu bar and clicking on File, go to Import, and choose File. Navigate to wherever you saved your project files and you notice I have an Assets folder saved right next to them. So I'm going to open up the Assets folder, and in here, we'll go ahead and import a couple of different assets. The first one I want to import is the Summer Camp Badge Illustrator file. So I'll click once on that file, and then down here at the bottom, I have a couple of different options. I want to make sure that Illustrator PDF Sequence is not selected, and under Import As, I'll just import this as footage, which means it's just going to go ahead and flatten any possible layers that are involved with that Illustrator file. I don't need to create a composition, and I'll go ahead and just click the Import button, and now that file's been brought into the project panel, and notice it's automatically selected, and I'm getting a preview over a black background here in the project panel. If I want to preview that file larger, I can go ahead and just double click directly on the file and that'll open here in the footage panel. Notice it looks like it's the composition panel, but it's really not. See the white line under the footage panel? This is letting me preview in the footage panel. If I click this white X to the left of the word footage, that'll go ahead and close that panel. Another way to import is to double click in the project panel. Navigate back to that assets folder and this time I'll import both the Blue Mountains and the Camper Mountains file. I'll click on the first one, hold down shift, and click on the next one, and they're both selected. Again, want to make sure multiple sequences is not selected, and then I'll go ahead and just click import, and both those elements will be imported right here into the project panel. I could use drag and drop if I had an explorer window or a finder window, and I could drop things directly into the project panel. But another great way is to use the new composition from footage button, because I want to import some video footage and create a composition from that footage. So I'll click on the new composition from footage button, and you guessed that I'm going to find a video clip. So I'll click once on this road trip camp MP4 file, and I'll click import. And not only has that file been imported, but I've also got a composition that matches those settings and it's already created the first layer in the composition. So as you can see, there are plenty of different ways you can import files into After Effects. The most important thing to remember is the fact that these files are not embedded with the project file. So you want to make sure to keep everything well organized on your hard drive before you bring it into your After Effects project. It's always a good idea to keep things organized whenever you're working in After Effects. In this video, we're going to focus on how to keep things organized specifically in the project panel. So go to the upper left portion of the interface and click once in the project panel to make it active. 
In looking at the different files we have in the project panel, you'll notice we have a bunch of different kinds of files. The first way to keep things organized is to use columns. If you go to the top portion of the project panel, notice I have the name column. If we click on that, it'll organize itself from A to Z or Z to A. The next column over is labels. Labels assigns colors to specific kinds of files. So if I click on the label column here, notice now the files are organized according to their label colors. I find it interesting that the JPEGs and the vector art have the exact same label color. So I'd like to change the color for the labels for each one of these JPEG files. So I'll click on the Blue Mountains JPEG and I'll hold down Shift and I'll click on the Camper Mountains JPEG and then I'll click on the label next to one of those files and let's change it to a nice bright orange color. Now they both have switched to orange and notice the order has changed because we still have things organized according to the label column. If we click directly on the type column, you get the idea. It's organized according to type. Now I'm going to double click on the word project in the upper left corner of the project panel to maximize that panel because you can access additional columns just by control clicking or right clicking on the dark gray area here right next to the name. So here I'll go to columns and notice I could set up any kind of information I'd like to organize things by, like the in point or the out point or the overall duration of the file. Now I don't want to use any of these, so I'll go ahead and just click outside of that menu to hide it, and I'll double click on the project panel one more time to make that panel smaller again. When you have multiple files selected, like I have here in the project panel, notice you can manipulate those files at the same time with one click, like how we change the label color. Since these are both selected, I can also just click on one of those files and drag them down to the new folder button here in the bottom of the project panel. And since both files were selected, when I let go, they'll both end up in the folder. Notice the new folder is already highlighted, so I can just go ahead and name it. And I'll call this Images and press Return. Now, let's organize the video file. If I click on this road trip video file, sure enough, there's a preview in my project panel. To add this to a folder, I'll just click and drag down to the new folder button. And here we can call this footage. And notice, even though I'm using caps for some and lower for others, it really doesn't change how things are organized other than just the fact that they are capitalized or lowercase. Now, the last one I want to create a folder for is this Summer Camp Illustrator file. So I'll click on that and drag it down to the new folder button. And here I can go ahead and name this Vectors. Now, what happens when you have everything organized into folders, but you still want to be able to find those elements without having to open every single folder? Well, you can come up to the search area here in the project panel. So if I click once in the search area and start to type the word camp, any footage that has the word camp in it is going to be popped up. Now, it's really important that you clear out this field when you're done searching for things so that you can see everything back in the project panel when you're finished. Now, the last thing you might want to do is delete files. Like, let's say there is an image that you're not working with anymore. Well, here, I'll open the images folder and I'll click on the Camper Mountains JPEG and drag it down, not to the new folder icon, but over here to the trash icon. And when I let go, it's going to tell me, are you sure you want to remove this because it's being used in one composition? I'll go ahead and say delete. And notice when I do that, now the image is gone out of my composition. So if I didn't want to do that, I can just press Control-Z on Windows or Command-Z on the Mac to undo. But now you know how to actually delete files in your project panel. Now I have to say, getting in the habit of keeping the project panel well organized is a very good way to keep your creative life pain-free as you continue on in your journey as an After Effects artist. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do a close project here, file close project. We do not need to save that. And I am going to set a quick preference before we get started. And this is under Edit Preferences. And I want to go to, um, I think it's under General. Or maybe, I think it's under, okay, it's under Import. That's what I'm looking for. Under Import here, that's the fourth tab down, Sequence Footage. I want that to import at 24 frames a second. And I don't know why this doesn't just default to what you have your composition set to, but it doesn't. So if you're importing 
uh, sequence images, which we are going to be doing a lot of, we want it to import as a 24 frames per second sequence, since that's our composition setting. So click OK on that. And I'm going to go over to Photoshop now. And we're going to do some um, uh, exporting of frames here. So what you're going to see on the bouncing ball is a diagram of how these frames should work. And yours doesn't have to follow this exactly. Uh, whatever is most plausible to you is fine. There's, there's a lot of different possibilities for a bouncing ball. But it should linger up on the apex of the arc for a little longer, and then it should speed up, strike the ground, and then jump back up to the apex again. So the four, five, and seven, eight frames that you see here should be going a little faster. The one, two, three, nine, ten, eleven frames should be lingering just a tad longer. Um, how do you get things? This is a common new animator question. A lot of students ask this. How do I speed up or slow down my animation? You, you, there's no speed control. There's nothing that you can click that will say speed up or slow down. What you need to do is to have a, an action that you want to take longer on screen is you need to add more frames. Uh, an action that you want to go by faster, you need to remove some frames. Uh, please see the principles of animation video. Um, so let's go to Photoshop here and I'm going to do a file new and we can go to film and video right here on the presets and use HDTV 1080p. Isn't that handy? And I'm going to click Create. And I should have addressed this. Um, I'm going to take a little sidetrack for a moment here and create a project folder. So I'm going to jump over to um, my desktop. Uh, this can be wherever you want. It can be in under Documents or Desktop. Um, I'm going to go under this folder because this is a place where I throw things that I don't really need to hold on to. So um, you find your folder and create a, um, create a folder for your project. Uh, let's call this one um, After Effects Tutorial 1. That'll work. So and that's just going to be an empty folder. Um, you can basically, as simple as just using this folder to throw everything in, that works just fine. If you want to use subfolders, that's fine. It's not as specific and finicky as your 3D animation project folder or your web project folder. But please do remember they are linked files. They are not embedded in the After Effects project. So you have to maintain whatever relative linkages you're creating, you have to maintain them if you're going to move these projects in any way or copy them or send them to me or keep a copy. So um, if any of those linked files move, those links will break. So um, I've got After Effects Tutorial 1. So I am going to, I'll save this right now. I'll do a save as for my Photoshop file. And I'll go to my Z Junk folder and go to After Effects Tutorial 1. And um, we're going to call this uh, we can call it AEPSD TUT1. The, obviously, if it's not obvious, it doesn't really matter what you call this, but um, that's what I'm calling it. Okay, so uh, I'm going to draw the frames kind of one by one, as you see in the diagram that we looked at. Um, you can animate in Photoshop in this way. This is one way to animate, drawing every frame. So what we're going to do in Photoshop to accomplish that is just create a new layer for every frame. Uh, but when we do the export, they have to go top down. So um, I'm going to do frame one here. And 
it's a masterpiece, I know. So there's frame one. When I create a new layer, it's going to put that above the layer that I just made. And that will export in a reverse direction, which can, it's, it's not like the end of the world, but you'll have to rename them all manually. So for, let's just make sure that they go top down here. And layer two, I'm just going to demonstrate to you how a, how a frame export works here. So layer two has a two in it. And then I'll actually select the background and click on new layer this time so it goes where I want it to. Layer three. Real masterpieces, I know. Layer four. And layer five, I'll do about It doesn't matter if you turn off the visibility of the others, but it looks a little less visually confusing. I'll do one more, seven. Okay, so there's what it looks like now. And this is going to be a seven frame animation that just displays for one frame the numbers one through seven. It doesn't show them all on top of each other at the same time. This is one frame at a time, so, so you'll see see if I can one two three and it'll be much faster than that so turn the visibility on on all the layers except the background this will have a um, this will have a transparent background if you export it as a file format that supports the transparency or if you export it as something that does not support the transparency, it will have a white background. So that's um, up to you to decide according to your project. What I'm going to do here is create the background as just white. So um, I can just do a file and what I want to do is export layers to files. And then when I choose the file format, I'm going to choose JPEG because JPEG will flatten the images to a white background. And export layers to files will export layers one through seven to a file. Now, I don't know if, um, we'll see how After Effects responds to this. It's usually um, a matter of file numbering and how it's labeled, like how, it's, how the files are named, so and I only want the visible layers, I don't want the background layer. Uh, file type, I'm gonna do JPEG. Uh, PSD or PNG24 will support your transparencies. Uh, PSD will even support layers, but um, probably easier to flatten down the layers. Quality, um, you can just crank it up to 12 if you want to, it doesn't matter. So then click run and let it do its thing for a minute. It's going to kind of act a little jumpy for a minute um, as it exports all of these layers to single files. And export layers to files was successful. Hooray! Uh, if you go to your folder that you just made, if everything went according to plan, you should have these images. Notice the numbers at the end of the file names. I'm going to show you the detailed view here. So those numbers are what are important to After Effects. And when I did this, it acted a little squirrely. I'm going to see if this, if this is going to work without renaming all of them. But if we have to rename all of them, it's actually not that hard. So. So let's go back into After Effects and we can do a new composition. And this should now be at the correct settings for everything that we're going to do. AE Tutorial Frame Animation. The preset should be at HDTV uh, 1080, 24 frames a second. Frame rate of 24. Um, background color isn't going to matter because we flattened the images so the background will 
be covered up by the images, so it's actually going to be a white background. And covered up by the images, so it's actually going to be a white background. Okay, now we're going to import the frames we just exported from Photoshop. Um, before we do that, I have to rename them all because After Effects is rather picky about its file names. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each one and rename it to where it's just the frame number and nothing else. And um, So I've got 0001.jpg, 0002.jpg, uh, and you can, uh, I recommend using three zeros. And that will pad out the frame numbers to uh, a greater extent than we're going to need this semester. So, because there's no way you're going to be animating more than 10,000 frames this semester. If you are, um, seek help. Oops, I didn't mean to double click it, I meant to rename it. Such a fine line between double clicking and twi clicking twice. So we want the file names to just be 0001, 0002, and so on. So that After Effects knows which, which ones to, which order to import them and, and which ones are in the sequence. So double click in your project window right here and what you want to do is select just the first file only. Highlight the first file and importer JPEG sequence will probably check itself. Um, that's a good sign. That means it knows what's going on. That should be checked. If it's not, check it and click import. And you'll see that this has been imported as footage now instead of this is not a still image. It is uh, 24 frames per second, 7 frame animation, so, or 7 frames of footage anyway. So if I drag this down to the composition now, I've got 7 frames of animation that I can play through. And a frame is of course 1 24th of a second, so this is going to play through pretty quick. Uh, if you want to, you can also reduce the size of your timeline so that the only thing in it is the seven frames. There's nothing extra. Frames are usually understood by most students these days thanks to video games, so I find that I don't really have to explain this as much anymore. But uh, a frame is just an image that is being shown to you for a certain amount of time before the next one in the sequence is shown and that from that we derive a measurement called frames per second and that is just how many still images you're looking at per second to create the illusion of motion. Uh, like I said we're setting all of our compositions to 24 frames per second. That is, and you can even animate at 12 frames per second, that's fine for this class. Um, if, uh, if you want to animate at 12 frames per second, save yourself a little work. Um, that's just fine. Uh, keep your compositions at 24 frames per second, but if you decide to animate at 12 frames per second, but um, when you import your footage, import it as just the footage as 12 frames per second. So in that preferences, where I said sequence footage 24. If you want to animate at 12 frames per second, just import just the footage. The compositions will stay at 24 frames per second. Um, so you can basically do half as many drawings. But <clears throat> for, um, for this particular assignment, just the first one, I want you to do all 24 drawings. So. Um, in order to do that, let's, uh, well, before I, before I get into that, let's just do a, we'll do a save as, and this saves the After Effect project, and I'm going to go to that f folder I made, and I'm going to call this AETUP1. Okay, 
and now I want to show you how to export your animation and upload it to YouTube. So this is how we're going to get stuff from After Effects into where your your classmates can look at it. So the way to do this is let's see I think you can click on composition add to render queue forgive my little bit of fumbling I'm not quite as quick with After Effects these days and usually the um, the defaults here are fine uh, we do need to specify the output so um, it put me right in my project folder because I saved uh, the project in that folder already um, and it's only letting me choose AVI that's interesting AVI is probably fine there's nothing necessarily wrong with it um, YouTube can understand an AVI but I think I want to take a look at these settings real quick that's all fine output module so output module I'm going to change that to QuickTime um, video output and sometimes you will have audio um, it's fine to just keep this on you don't even have to turn it off um, so basically just if you change this to QuickTime then it will uh, render an MOV um, the color is probably going to be straight unmatted for most of what we do although it's given me a settings mismatch that's new it doesn't hurt anything to put it on pre-multiplied so we'll just we'll leave it that way so we don't need to make an alpha channel but we'll just leave it on anyway so um, click OK and then um, output to we're going to save this as AE Tutorial Frame Anim, and it should save right in that project folder that we already made. And then finally click Render. It'll go through the seven frames, and you'll hear a little chime when it's done. So it will have created an MOV file in your project folder, and this should open La la la. You can open it on your computer, but uh, it doesn't like it. Probably likes it more on a um, on a Mac, but I'm not that concerned about it. I mainly wanted to show you how to upload it to YouTube. So I'm going to go to YouTube and I'm going to click on Create right here. And again, make sure that you are on your LCC account when you're doing this. Uh, so create, upload video, and I'm just going to click select files, and I can go right to that folder that I made, and even though my computer, and even though my computer did not, YouTube will know what to do with this, with this MOV file, and it will be able to show it. So I'm going to click upload. And this is going to create a YouTube uh, movie under my name. It's going to give you a video link right here. And this is the link that you use in your self-analysis so that we can look at your animations. You're going to have two of these for the first project. Um, one will be your frame-by-frame -frame animation of the bouncing ball and the other will be your keyframe animation of the bouncing ball. So, yes, it's made for kids. No, it's not made for kids. 
the visibility here is really important. You can have it as unlisted or public. Unlisted means um, the average schmuck on YouTube can't just search, can't just put in keyword searches and find your video. Public means that the average schmo can put in search terms and find your video. Do not set it to private. That means nobody but you can look at your video, even with the link. So that will that will make it so that we can't critique your video. So uh, click save, and this will sometimes continue processing, but it will be ready. Um, shortly so you can post the link and by the time people get to it it'll probably be ready okay so let's do a new project and when you're doing um, your animation of your ball obviously you're gonna do what I just showed you except it's gonna be one two it gained a little weight there try not to make it gain weight this is not a good example visually I'm just showing you how to do it technically and then it's gonna start elongating And so we'll do a squash, and then it'll continue up its arc in this direction. So this is the sequence of frames that you will export for your bouncing ball. I do not draw particularly well with a mouse, and I draw even worse with a trackpad. So. Um, if you have access to a tablet, that's great. Use it. If you don't have access to a tablet, um, you can definitely draw this stuff by hand and scan it in and just um, crop it to 1920 by 1080p and that'll be fine too. It's up to you. Uh, you can just draw it right in Photoshop. That's fine. However, you got to do it. Um, there's lots of different ways to approach this and you'll be making some still images for a background too I don't particularly want just a boring black um, circle on a completely um, uh, flat background now the keyframe one you can do in Photoshop or you can do in After Effects. Well, I mean, you'll have to do it in After Effects ultimately, but I mean, what I mean is you can create the assets in Photoshop or you can do it all in After Effects. So, primarily what's important is um, to create the keyframes, I'm going to create my ball and I'll try to get this center, but I'm probably not going to get it exact. So, what I want to do here is I want to turn on the Y key to move the pivot point and that is going to affect how the um, how the ball rotates and then I'm going to center that in the way that was shown in the video. So if it's like that, the ball will rotate around the center or resize around the center or whatever. Um, what I actually want is I want the pivot point down here on the ball right about at that bottom dot because I want the squashing to happen like this and not like this. See the difference? OK, 
Okay, so I can just drag that shape layer wherever I want, and um, nothing's going to move yet, obviously. So, what needs to happen for movement to occur is we need to create some keyframes, assuming we're not talking about frame-by-frame uh, -frame drawing, we're talking about keyframes now. Um, to keyframe the animation, uh, you do that down here in the layers. So there's a number of different pieces of this layer. The transform bit is what we're interested in right now. Transform refers to movement, some kind of change in position. So, and then here's one called position, and you can see that there is a little stopwatch next to that, as well as a numeric value. Okay, so in order to keyframe the position, also I want to make sure that my move tool is on, or the selection tool, um, you can click the stopwatch to start uh, the animation. That means that we've, wherever the playback head is when you click the stopwatch, um, which a good place is the first frame, it will create the first keyframe. If I move the frame head over here, you can see where that keyframe is. It's a little blue diamond. Now what that keyframe does is, um, when there's just one, it's not going to do anything yet. Uh, what that keyframe does is it will hit that position on that frame and then create whatever in-betweens are necessary to hit the next one. So I'll go to about the middle and I'm going to move this down here. And it will automatically key that for me. So I've got the keyframe in the second one. Um, now what I kind of don't want is I don't I wanted this to be centered. So I'm going to undo that. And um, when you when you keyframe your first keyframe, it works a little better if it's in the center and then you move it. So it doesn't have to be exact, but if you uh, if you turn on the rulers you can get a pretty good idea. 1080 by 1920. Rulers are control R just like every other Adobe software, but I'm just going to kind of get it about in the middle and turn the keyframing back on again. Yeah, a little to the right. Okay, a little to the right. Control R. Oh, no. Not control R. Keyframe. There we go. And then um, I would rather have this registration point more towards the center. So um, the element that you're going to keyframe uh, when you start, when you press the stopwatch for, for the first time, I like to have it in the center so that its origin of movement is, is right there with it. So <clears throat> the position, now I'll go to uh, frame 12, that's pretty much the center of the animation and um, I can add another keyframe by clicking this diamond right here that adds another blue diamond and I can take that and move that down to about where it's going to strike the ground and I can move that playback head to the end here and click here to add another keyframe and I can move that back up to where it's now um, up in the air again. Okay, so I've got an animation now of the ball going from here down to here and then back up to here. It's got a uh, few problems. Uh, these are problems of physics. Um, and you can see the problems visually when you stop the animation. As long as you've got the ball selected, you'll see the um, the movement, the, the motion path here. And the motion path is problematic because it works by Bezier curves, which are by default curving 
in and out of every um, keyframe that you made. So what it's doing is smoothing down into this into this floor strike and then smoothing back up. And that's not how it works. Remember earlier it's supposed to speed up a little bit, smack the floor, and then make a dramatic jump back up and then it should slow down at the apex of those. And as you can see they're all all the frames in between which are represented with these little dots, they're all evenly spaced, which is that's that's not what we saw on that diagram there should be more at the apex and fewer as it's falling and rising. So here's how we're going to fix that. Um, we can take these Bezier handles right here, that's these things, and we can just click and drag and we can totally edit those. But for this floor strike We'll do, let's do the let's do the high points first. So I'll grab this one and I'm going to pull it out to the left a little bit and then I'll grab this one and pull it out to the right a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry, I said that backwards. This one I'm pulling to the right, this one I'm pulling to the left. I do, mo I do know my left from right, really. So that gets us um, a little closer to the shape that the motion path should take, but now this needs to be a nice spike that hits the ground. Um, and if we grab one handle and move it around, it's gonna, uh, they're gonna work in tandem. We can't, um, we can't make it, make this one move up and the other one move up without um, breaking the handle. So in Adobe, when you're editing Bezier curves, you press the Alt key to break the handle. So holding Alt, you can grab that and create a spike or a corner in other words. Illustrator junkies this should be familiar to you. This is just editing paths, edi editing Bezier paths um, which represents a motion instead of a, a shape. So now um, we've got something a lot closer to a ball bounce. It's not certainly not what I would call perfect but it has uh, a good motion to it so it's coming down strikes the floor and bounces back up it doesn't feel like it floats down and just kind of lingers there for a minute like it did before so um, the next thing we need is our squash and stretch so this is going to have to squash when it gets down here now your your instinct is going to be to go to this keyframe and um, set a scale keyframe here, go to this keyframe and set a scale keyframe here with it um, squashed. So uh, that's going to be wrong and I'm going to show you why. So I'll do exactly that. I'll set the first keyframe there and the second keyframe there and it's going to make the interpolation go from frame 0 to frame 12. So it's like it's deflating as it goes and we're gonna uncheck that that constraint because we want it to just and I wanted that to um, I wanted that to I wanted that to scale from the bottom but I screwed that up so oh well and remember the principles of animation um, this should not be losing volume so it should get a little bit wider so what's going to happen there is it interpolates from the first keyframe to the second keyframe so right here it's already starting to collapse when it should be fully a ball all the way until almost when it hits the floor in fact on these two frames or three frames or so it should elongate a little bit so this first keyframe, the, the mistake that was made was putting this first keyframe right at the beginning of this motion, right up here. This first keyframe should actually be more like here. So you can actually just drag these keyframes and move them. So if I want to have it 
quickly shrink down in one frame or slightly less quickly shrink down in two frames either way I can do that um, I'm gonna set it to one frame I find one frame to be pretty good and so now it will retain its shape and then boop you know squash real quick and then it needs to regain its original shape right here so I'm gonna put another keyframe there and I'll actually type these in this time because it's easy to not get things perfect when you're click dragging a mouse so I'll just make the height and width 100 percent on the scale and what will happen is it'll squash and then bounce right back to its normal state real quick. That takes about a frame. If you want to move it to two frames, you'll see it just a little bit more prominently. That's the basic difference. A keyframe is any change, um, or rather any position that the animation has to hit. It doesn't even have to be a position, it can be any attribute. So position, scale, rotation, opacity, as well as uh, a zillion other things, color, and um, all kinds of stuff can be keyframed. And it has to hit that value at that point in time. And then when you set another keyframe, it will create the in-between frames on its own. So it will um, interpolate from frame 1 to frame 12 and then from frame 12 to, to frame 24. So uh, I'm gonna do one more thing here and um, we still need this ball to be a little bit slower up on the peaks and a little bit faster coming down and going up. So the way to do that is with ease in and ease out and you can just select your keyframes and I think we have to go to there should be an ease right in here somewhere I just have to remember where it is so I thought keyframe assistant yeah okay keyframe assistant sorry about that animation keyframe assistant so with your keyframe selected um, we're going to ease out, which will um, create just a little bit of extra time, as you can see. So uh, that's ease out. The middle one we're gonna do just ease so ease in and out no undo that and I'm, I'm wrong I don't want to do that just the last one we're gonna ease into the last one and that just creates some, a little bit more realistic motion in the sense that the ball hangs in the air uh, a little longer and the parts where it's dropping and, and rising are a little bit faster. Now again, um, to export this, don't forget, composition, um, add to render queue, and set the output module if you do render AVIs, it's probably not going to hurt anything. I just am used to um, uh, QuickTime movies. So um, click OK and set the file name to whatever you want, AE Tutorial Keyframe Animation. And then I'll click Render. And I haven't saved this yet, I just realized, so I should do a save as. I should have done that earlier. That's bad for bad form. Keyframe anim. 
you don't have to put the .aep on there. It'll do it automatically. So, And again, go to YouTube and um, make sure you're going in through your LCC account. So if you don't know how to get there, it's uh, from my LCC. You go to student email. Uh, click on the grid of nine circles where it says Google Apps right here. And scroll down to YouTube. Make sure you go in that way and that you're looking at your LCC YouTube account. Uh, it's important to do that. I cannot accept work from private channels. It has to be through LCC's, uh, what LCC has provided us. So we're going to go upload video again from that create video icon upload video and then we can choose the keyframe and to reiterate this is not your homework this shows you how to do your homework I have not given you an example of what I expect to see um, that would be a very lame homework assignment that shouldn't have taken anyone more than 10 minutes so um, you will be uh, graded on aesthetics and and design choices so look at the examples uh, and that is a good example of what is expected um, remember on the visibility to uh, no it's not made for kids yeah, or it is it doesn't matter remember on the visibility not private either unlisted or public and then give us this link write it in into the forum with your self-analysis post. This will go by real fast, so I'll loop it and restart it. And there is our bouncing ball animation uh, made with keyframes. Okay, and that is everything you need to know to create your first project. Go forth and kick some booty and have fun. Take it easy. Go forth and kick some booty and have fun. Take it easy.